done the frequency analysis of this transmissibility and we end up with this graph. Let's assume the first case where the machine has rigid connections to the receiver structure. Because of rigid connection, the stiffness of the system is high and therefore the natural frequency is also high. If we turn on the machine, what the graph is telling us is that if the machine runs at very low speed, means it will excite low frequency, we have the transmissibility almost 1. If the speed is a bit high, the transmissibility will be higher. If the speed coincides with the natural frequency, the transmissibility will be sufficiently high. And only at speed well above the natural frequency where we will get the transmissibility to be less than 1. So this whole graph here is like the characteristic of transmissibility of the system if the machine runs from low speed to high speed. Now let's assume that this machine here now runs at a fixed speed and it excites the vibration frequency below the natural frequency assuming to be here and we denote this as omega e. It is the excitation frequency. So in this case the transmissibility is at the amplification area which is more than 1. We denote this transmissibility amplitude as Ta. Now for the excitation frequency to be in the isolation area, we have discussed in the previous video that we have to have a flexible mounting for the machines. So let's say we install here a rubber pad with low stiffness constant. We have to make sure that the stiffness constant value is low so that the natural frequency will be well below the excitation frequency. So let's assume that the new natural frequency after installing the rubber pad is here. Then if we run the machine again from low to high speed, we have the new transmissibility graph. So now at the same excitation frequency as before, we have a lower level of transmissibility TB, which is now less than 1, which means the transmitted force to the receiver is less than the excitation force by the machine. The next question is, what if we use the same rubber pad with the same stiffness constant, but with higher damping? We can see from the graph that the peak at the resonance is controlled by 1 over 2 zeta. So increasing the damping loss factor zeta will reduce the peak amplitude. And now, what about the level at the isolation area? Remember that the level at this area is proportional to the value of the damping loss factor. So the level here is not going to be lower, but will be higher. So at the same speed of the machine, the transmissibility is greater than TB, which indicates that the isolation performance is declined. If you further increase the damping of the isolator, the isolation performance at the machine operating speed becomes worse. So what is the point of increasing the damping if we sacrifice the isolation performance? Certain machine, especially with very high speed, when it is first turned on, needs to run slowly from low speed before it reaches its final operating speed. The process is known as machine run up. So along the way, it will pass through the natural frequency of the system. We want to ensure that at the resonance, the transmissibility is not too high that can cause structural risk to the structure. And we want the level to be low, but with a compromised isolation performance at the operating speed of the machine. In theory, the lower the natural frequency, the better the isolation performance. But the lower the natural frequency means the lower the stiffness of the isolator. In this case, we have to consider the static deflections, which is the strength of the isolator to sustain the weight of the machine before the machine is operated. Therefore, the stiffness constant cannot be too low to allow reasonable static deflections and cannot be too high to have a good performance of isolations. As a conclusion on designing the vibration isolation, first, choose the stiffness of the isolator so that the natural frequency is lower than the excitation frequency. To be exact, 
omega n should be lower than the excitation frequency over square root of 2. Second, adding damping can reduce the oscillation performance but safer at resonance. Third, consider the static deflections when choosing the isolator. In the next video, we will discuss about base excitations where the input of the vibrations is coming from the base structure and the vibration is transmitted to the connecting structure on top of the base. See you! If you like this learning content, please subscribe to my channel Azma Putra or you can visit my website www.azmaputra.com